let's keep going. Let's do the four day. And to do that, let's just do this four day. Um, yeah, that one. Actually, we'll do it the old school way then. Um, so, four days. Let's start with a. Uh, what would be the smallest here? For the 25 wide. Okay. I think I started with the 25%. So. The four day, 25 wide test put on every Monday, uh, allocating 25% of our portfolio. And again, I am not suggesting this by any means, but just for testing purposes, 25% allocation and our profit target is 30%. Pretty high win rate year to date. So that 25% does really, really well. Okay, so remember that thirty-five thousand seven seventy CAGR. Let's just do it live. Let's go fifty percent. Okay, this is super interesting. A lot more PL, crazy CAGR year to date, bigger drawdown. Right? That's a fifty percent allocation of that trade. Let's go 75%. This is turning into one of those like theoretical like unicorn trades, right? Like 75%. That's a really good trade still. It's interesting. It's going up. 100%. Hey, oh, game over. And this is what's crazy to me. This is the beauty of like allocation. <clears throat> why it's like the great equalizer. Because you look at it, you're like, at 90% allocation, this thing is going gangbusters. Obviously with a m very big drawdown, but it's going gangbusters. You put even, let's see, let's see where the breaking point is. I haven't done this yet. 95% allocation, I bet it's going to go down. Yep, it goes down. So then, just for the sake of it, 90 was, was 600. Let's do an 85% allocation. Okay, so that's better. And you go, well, maybe 80%? 695, remember that. 80% at 85, 695. Okay, so, you know, without getting into specific percentages, this is the danger of allocation too, of curve fitting, of being like, okay, so this strategy with an 85% is like a monster trade. Now, how would we break this? If someone sent this to you and was like, bros and and brosettes, brosette girls, bro, bros and girls, um, I was homeschooled, so um, never, never did a thing. Um, if someone sent this to you and was like, hey, I found the trade and all you have to do is put 85% of your entire portfolio in it and you'll be rich. How do we break this together? How do we break it to this person that we should not do that? What, what would be the arguments for it? Against it. Anybody care to play? Yeah, a couple ones. The drawdown. Could you handle emotionally a drawdown of 90%? Like, you have this trade. And let's say you started with 10000 And within three months, you've gotten to like 100000 It's just gun gangbusters. It's, it's incredible. Could you handle emotionally a day in which 
you are back down to like eight thousand dollars like these type of trades that's what it presupposes these giant winners with like a 96 percent win rate is that you are going at some point to get wrecked even if time plays out that like over time you you are going to have a moment where you know i'm in the south so we say that you're going to have a come to jesus moment you are going to have religion at some of these trades over time right have you guys encountered any of those trades where like uh, just in your options trading journey where you you have um you find something that you feel like works really really well and then you like wake up one morning and it's all gone have you guys had any of those trades yet yeah lord knows i have <laughs> it's you know uh and and it's very very sobering i have a trade uh that i do that's kind of like a binary FOMC type event, which we have like three of them a week now because of inflation. But this, this CPI print number, um, I had a trade on that was a double calendar, you know, in the, in the SPX talk test trades channel, we talk about double calendars a lot. And I have one that has worked really well for me this year. I like it a lot. And I put it on, with size this small, uh, yesterday into the close and through, through some of my size edit, probably the biggest sizing that I've done up to date with that trade. Well, <clears throat> I woke up this morning before the CPI print and I knew that there, this wasn't going to stay the same, but this is the point of the emotion of it. I knew that it wasn't going to stay where it was, but when I woke up this morning, it was down like 15%, right? Well, because I had sized up so much, that's a sizable loss, considering that I'm trying to take profit at like 5%. So 15% hurts quite a bit. Uh, saying that to say, even in moments where you're like, it's, this trade is going to work out, it's, it's built for the CPI announcement, and it did work out, it was fine. Uh, you wake up in the morning, you look at that, and you're like, oh, dear gosh, that's not nice, right? Saying all that to say with allocation, that even trades that have like 96%, like this, this is a pretty, theoretically, this is a pretty good trade, right? Like forget, forget um, 85%, like say at 50%, this is still like a very, very good trade with a huge CAGR and all that stuff. It's not about that at a certain point. What it's about is would you keep trading it because that's what positive expectancy requires if you had a drawdown of 88%, right? Would, would you keep going with that? Um, so yes, that's one way. It's like if our friend came to us and was like, all we have to do is put 85% of our capital on this trade and we're rich, we would say, well, look at the drawdown, bro. You're like, it's, you, you're, you're gonna be sad, you know? You're gonna be upset. Um, what's another thing? I, I think someone actually said it, curve, Curve fitting, right? Um, yeah, the idiot pick curve fit on time. What do you wait? Can you flesh that out a little bit? What do you mean by that? I think I know, but I'd love to. Hmm, that's exactly right. So, if something year to date has this win rate that's huge, uh. That's well, Castle. That's exactly the point. Yeah, that's. Let's look at that. So someone sends you this. It's like year to date, this thing's insane. I would immediately go. Okay, let's go to the COVID crash. This COVID crash is the uh, destroyer of worlds for a lot of. Yeah, there you go. COVID crash is the destroyer of worlds of almost everyone selling premium. And I know that's not true universally, but in general. I think those are the same thing. Anyway, it's true for a lot of people that all of their premium selling strategies just, it, it was sobering for those couple weeks to see, right? Uh, yes, in 2018 wasn't either for premium sellers. That's right. And we could see that. Let's just do it real quick. 
what happened in January or in 2018 that made premium selling strategies not great? Does anybody remember? Was anybody trading in 2018 in, in, in general? Like, I would love I would love to get some sort of sense of that. Like, was anyone trading options in 2018? Feels like pre pre COVID. It feels like 40 years ago to me. But yeah. So Tom Brady uh, came back and beat the Falcons, I believe. And that was painful, but that's a different conversation. Um, and then the next day, it was a Monday. Uh, I went out with Rusty and some other workmates and we looked at the news and the VIX went up like 40% in an hour. Uh, well, if you had any premium selling strategies, it wasn't even the price drop. It's just you got priced out via volatility, right? Uh, the VIX ET I believe that blew up was, I think, Vixie. I could be wrong about that. There's one called Vixie. I think it might have blew up. But it was an inverse one. So what happens when VIX goes up 100%? <laughs> like no one had ever thought that through, right, in a day. So anyway, that's one way you can quickly tell. Now, there's an inverse to this. And this is why I, I want to I talk about these things together. Is that has anyone found a trade that goes back to 2013 and is profitable yet? Has anyone, anyone found that? Yeah, in general, selling puts, right? I mean, a lot of um, David Sun and Tommy Chambliss and stuff like that, like their research shows that through time that has positive expectancy. Um, but if you're looking for like a neutral trade, right, like a delta neutral trade, it is very, very difficult to find one that's been profitable since 2013. Now, this is why there's a caveat to everything. If someone said, you know, the, for instance, the double calendar, it's profitable, but it's very, it's much less profitable through time than it has been this year. So there's a caveat to it, and this is it. I, in general, say... The follow-up question is to say, I wonder why this year is different, right? I wonder why this year has worked so well and in other years it hasn't. And that gets you testing more things. It gets you thinking through more ideas. So, for instance, this one since 2018, what I would do with that if I really liked this trade and I wanted to try to figure out what was going on. I might say, I only want to put this trade on in an environment where VIX is over 20. So let's just see since 2018 what that has been. Not much of a change, right? Now I'd say, okay, well, because COVID was crazy, I only want to do this if it's between a 20 and a 30 VIX. That's a little bit better, right? But you're still not great at all. So I would do that. I would do stuff where it's like you start going through the list. Maybe you look into squeeze metrics and say like, okay, maybe did they have some stuff going on that could have pointed us to stuff during that time? Uh, how is RSI? How are the indicators going from that stuff? Were we in an older, oversold environment, overbought environment? Um, there's a million ways to do it, to dig into it. But I... So I, I feel as the person who like feels protective of people, I don't want people to take all their money and put an 85% allocation into a trade that's only worked this year. On the flip side of that, I want to encourage people to say there are seasons to the, to the market, right? And we're definitely in a specific type of season. So it's just use caution, you know, put a portfolio of different types of trades in, you know, get diversity via that. 
Um, does that make sense at all? Any thoughts about that? I know I just rambled for a long time, so feel free to just be like, just shut up. Um, let's keep going otherwise. 